in first grade, somebody taught you how to read. And as soon as that teacher thought that you could read, they started using reading against you. They made you read a story and then answer questions. They made you read a story and then asked you where to put the commas and the periods. They made you write a story in that same style. So never have you been given the opportunity to just enjoy reading for what it is, which is story at the heart, story. And humans do like stories. And it's so funny that when students get to English class, turns out they have a hard time liking the story. And boy, do English teachers try hard. They stand up in the front of the classroom and they flap their little teacher wings and they talk about how much every student is going to love this book. And they might even do some anticipation guides or they might show some YouTube videos that get people excited. Maybe they play some 1920s jazz to get people ready for Great Gatsby. And, and maybe the kids are excited. Maybe the kid is sitting there in the class thinking, wow, this is going to be the book that I really fall in love with. This is going to be the one that speaks to me. And then there comes a moment where the students actually get out their books and the teacher says, okay, class, open your books. And it's right there that the teacher has lost 60 to 70% of the class, at least in Southern New Mexico. I, I have only taught in Southern New Mexico. I can't speak to other places in the country. But what I've seen is the second we say, open your book, we've lost the kids. Now I happen to be teaching Lord of the Flies. This is written by a white dude from 1950s. His language is a little bit stilted. People talk in kind of a weird way. Like Piggy says something like, you can't have swim well. You know, so there's some weird talk in there, some Cockney accent. And underneath all that language, Underneath all those metaphors and great descriptive passages about the jungle, underneath all that stuff, there is a story. But very few kids actually get to be excited about that story because they're having to wade through the language. Now, I'm a 43-year-old guy. I've come to understand that Lord of the Flies is a great piece of writing that should be respected. But I also understand that as a teenager, I thought it was stilted, boring, lame, hard to read, inaccessible. Now, for the history of teachers, teachers have been forcing this stuff on kids, thinking that maybe the kids are going to like it. Teachers have been told to build relationships with kids, and then immediately we take that relationship and we stab them in the back with stuff by dead white guys. Now, maybe you found writing that it's uh, written by the same color and the same gender and the same sexual orientation as your students. Maybe you found that, and that's, that was great, and that went well for you. But still, you're asking them to read. And what I would recommend is that you go back to the actual story. Remove the writing, remove the language, remove the diction, remove the amazing metaphors and the great literary devices that English teachers flap their little wings about. Remove it and tell the story to your students. Tell the story to your students. Look them in the eye. This right here, this is dead. This is a dead document. It's dead. It is a tree that maybe was alive like 100 years ago, but it's dead now. And the books that your students are looking at is dead. So you are, you are initiating a dead activity when you have students sit there with their eyes on the book. What you've done is you've, you've, you've cut the relationship and you've broken the trust and the friendship. And you've broken the life. So what I would recommend is look at your kid in the eye, look at your students in the eye, and tell them the story. Tell them the story. After you've told them the story, then you can do close reading. Then knock yourself out with essay questions, whatever. Do all that other English class stuff. But why can't we just let them have the story for what it is? As if we were all around a campfire before books, before books, but after cavemen, and they're standing around a fire, and the troubadour comes, and the storyteller comes, and he looks people in the eye, and he tells them a story, and they liked it. And that can be what your English class looks like, too. Why try to get them excited about reading and excited about a story just to betray them with making them read the story?